Hey guys, welcome back. I have a couple of pictures to start us off for you to have a little think about. What do you reckon this picture and this picture might have in common? All will be revealed very shortly. Today we are going to understand the importance of using materials efficiently. We're also going to learn what tessellation and nesting are and the differences between them and consider other factors affecting accuracy in manufacturing. Here is that picture on the left once again. You can see how the stairs go all over the place. It's really quite bizarre. And the picture on the right has an infinite staircase. Both of these pictures are created by an artist called M. C. Escher, who was Dutch. So Escher was known as the father of tessellation for his amazing works where he would create um, intricate, amazing objects, often based on wildlife and nature, which interlocked in such a way that they would create a picture that could go on forever, theoretically, particularly like the bats and angels. It's really quite creepy. So tessellating is arranging shapes to fit together, typically in a repeating pattern without gaps or overlapping. So for example, we can have squares like on a chessboard, hexagons like how bees make honeycomb, they do an amazing job. And if you're interested, in order to actually tessellate any kind of polygon, all of the corners at the intersection need to join up to 360 degrees. And some people enjoy tessellating shapes so much that actually we celebrate World Tessellation Day every year on the 17th of June. Maybe give it a think this year. Okay, so let's think less abstract. Can we think of examples, real world examples of products that use tessellation? Well, how about things like brickwork and paving, puzzles, splashbacks and wall tiles, parquet floor, Called fabrics, we see an awful lot of fabric patterns. They come in soft furnishing, patchwork. And even projects that you could do at school, like you could create a beautiful design where you could turn it into stationery, wrapping paper, mugs, or even something like this fractal lap design. So you might be thinking, how does this relate to using materials efficiently? Because that's what we're talking about today. Well, when products are made on a large scale, some shapes have to be cut out repeatedly, perhaps like this machine part on the left hand side. You just want thousands of the same thing. Now, manufacturers don't want to waste materials as this equals cash in the bin. Any space that you can see that's sort of white there obviously would be having to either repurpose. You could melt it down, perhaps, but it's not actively used. So therefore, manufacturers have to think about how to get these parts as close together as possible, an efficient arrangement to minimise waste. But unlike that machine part, very few parts are all the same shape and size. So the most common method to reduce waste is by nesting them together instead of tessellating. When we say nesting, we don't mean necessarily like birds in a tree, but you might be familiar with the word in terms of things like nesting tables, nesting dolls, nesting bowls. These are lots of different uh, examples of products that use nesting really efficiently in order to maximize space. Now, if we bring this back to nesting in manufacture, we are talking about irregular shapes. So for instance, box nets, might be die cut from a sheet of card. So we have these sort of cross shapes, these T shapes here, and they have glue tabs sticking out. So we're never going to be able to tessellate them perfectly together. We just need to be able to arrange them to minimize the waste in between. Similarly, you might have fabric pattern pieces for something like this leather jacket. There it is from before. And they are punched from a hide of leather, which are incredibly expensive, 100, 200 pounds per hide. You definitely want to minimise the waste in between. And we can take that even further because CAD CAM is becoming so well utilised that manufacturers are increasingly using nesting software to calculate the most cost effective layout and actually just do the job for them. 
Okay, it, you tell it what little pieces need to be included and it will just arrange them for you. So clever. So like the one we have on the left here, looks like it's a series of machine parts, not sure what for. On the right though, we have a T-Rex, one of those slot together ones that you can cut out of wood. Before we move on, just a few other considerations to be really efficient with the materials you're using. So we always need to keep quality control in mind and think about our tolerances. How you mark out cut and assemble parts plays a role in efficiency. You probably heard the old saying, mark twice, cut once, and I couldn't say it often enough. But patterns, templates and jigs can all help here. You can place something down, you can drill the same hole, you can mark the same piece and you'll be much more accurate. Next is width of the cutting tool. Blades typically measure between one and three millimetres, which is an awful lot. Imagine you have a piece which is only six millimetres wide. Well, a three millimetre blade is half of that. You have to make sure that you are always cutting into the wastage. What do we mean by that? Well, here's an example of a piece of MDF. I've vertically marked where I want to be cutting and the diagonal lines on the right hand side indicate the wastage, the remnant that I don't want to keep. Right now, most children, too many children I've seen, will place their blade right on the line. Now we zoom right in here. OK, but you can see we're actually half of it is going into the piece itself, which isn't OK. It's not how we want to do it. Well, how do we want to do it? Well, we place the blade into the wastage. Right, the bit that's going to be removed. That's the play. Now we do have things like laser cutting and lasers are much, much finer than blades are, but they still come around 0.2 millimeters. So if you're, you know, creating a, an engineered machine part for an aeroplane, say, you know, that can still make a difference. Lastly, we're thinking about calibration. Reference points are important in aligning CAM machines with the material they're going to cut through. So whether it's a 3D printer building up or a laser cutter cutting through or a sewing machine um, creating a design, right? The X, Y and Z coordinates have to be calibrated back to zero after each use. And they typically do that for you. And in fact, when the X, Y and the Z all equal zero, 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 OK, that's called the datum has a particular name. Now, in order to work out which arrangement is best, if we're doing a project at school, say, we can work out the area or the volume that will inevitably be wasted to try to minimise it. That's going to require some maths. And when we do math problems, do remember to make sure that your units are there because you might not get the mark. So here's a simple applied maths question and we can go through it together. We want to cut six circular key fobs, that's the circles in red, from one sheet of felt in the blue. The sheet of felt is 70 by 95 millimetres. The circle diameters are 30 millimetres. Calculate the percentage of waste to one decimal place. OK, I'll read that one more time. Calculate the percentage of waste to one decimal place. OK. Well, first, what we want to do is work out the area of the felt, which is quite simple. That's 70 by 95 length times width, which comes to 6650 millimetres squared. Next, we want to work out the total area of the circle. So let's start with just one circle. OK, to work out the area of the circle, it's pi r squared. So if we substitute in the numbers 3.14, which is pi, times now the radius now we don't haven't been given the radius we've been given the diameter well what is the radius well it's half the diameter so it's 30 divided by 2 and we still have to square that so 3.14 by 15 squared which gives us 706.5 okay so now we've got the area of one circle what do we need to do well we need to multiply it by six 6 times 706.5 comes to 4239. Now check in as you're working things out. Is that a smaller number or a bigger number than the total area of the felt? Well, it's a smaller number. OK, good. We're on track. Next, we're trying to work out the wastage. Remember, that's just the area in blue that we can see. 
So we're going to subtract 4239, the area of the circles, from the total area of 6650, which gives us 2411 millimetres squared. Now, if we left that here and we needed to work it out in, say, centimetres squared, then we certainly could. But that wasn't the question, remember. We are calculating the percentage waste. Now, before we even do that, maybe just do an estimate. How much area, roughly, do you think has been wasted? Well, it's going to be fairly high because we can see an awful lot of blue there. Is it going to be maybe 20, 25 percent? Maybe more. OK, so keep that in mind. So let's work out the percentage of wastage and how do we do that? Well, we divide the smaller number by the large number and multiply it by 100. And that gives us 36.25. Remember, it's asked for one decimal place. The answer is 36.3%. And there we go. That makes sense. right? So it's not a really tiny number. It's not 3% because we can see quite a lot of the blue. And it's not 300% because it can't be more than the original. So 36.3 sounds about right. Good job. Well done today, guys. Let's go through the recap. So today you have learned about tessellation. That's an arrangement of typically repeating shapes without gaps or overlaps. Examples include wall tiles, puzzles, and designing repeating patterns for school projects like stationery or bugs. Nesting is an arrangement of irregular shapes used most commonly in manufacturing to reduce waste. Examples include laser cutting projects at school, CNC machining of aeroplane parts, and die cutting packaging. Nesting software is used extensively in industry. And quality control must be considered, including accommodating for blade width, recalibrating machinery to the datum between use, and using patterns, templates, and jigs to improve your accuracy. Great job today, guys, and I'll see you in class.